In today's video we will watch the most brutal convicted killers that shocked the country and went on news worldwide for their horrific actions. They ended up getting the longest sentences in court. Let's start with the first brutal case of Dennis Rader. Dennis, also known as the Bind, Torture, Kill serial killer, was given a punishment on court day. He got 10 life sentences in a row. This ends a long investigation into the murders that frightened the people of Kansas town for many years, starting in the 1970s. Judge Gregory Waller gave the longest sentence possible, which was at least 175 years with no chance of parole. Back when the murders happened, Kansas didn't have the death penalty. During the two-day hearing to decide the punishment, detectives described the killings in detail, and relatives of the victims called Radar a monster while crying. Finally, Radar himself spoke, admitted he lied to his family and victims. The dark side is there, but now I think light is beginning to shine, Radar said. Hopefully someday God will accept me. Rada, who's 60 years old, used to be the president of a church congregation and a leader in the Boy Scouts, but he had a secret side to him. He went by the initials BTK, which stood for bind, torture and kill. In February he got arrested. Then in June he admitted to being guilty of killing 10 people between 1974 and 1991. This man needs to be thrown in a deep dark hole and left to rot, a victim said. He should never ever see the light of a day, brother of a victim said angrily in court. On the day of the court hearing, the county sheriff's office talked about the last time Dennis Rea was known to have killed someone. He strangled Dolores Davis, who was 63 years old, back in 1991. Rea admitted to handcuffing Davis and tying her up with pantyhose. He confessed to the police that it took about two or three minutes for her to die. This awful act fueled his disturbing fantasies for many years. Once Davis passed away, Rada put her body beneath a bridge where it rotted away and seemed to be eaten by animals. Later, the person on trial came back to take pictures of her wearing a mask that looked like a woman, which Rada used for his fantasies of tying up people. He carried another victim's body to the church he went to in Wichita. He covered the windows with black plastic so no one could see inside. Then he took pictures of her tied up for his own pleasure. Rada, referring to the last two murders near the Park City home where he lived, told police this is not really good serial killer business. This is right at my back door. I started getting lazy the last few years. Finally, police in the community found an ending for the horrific years he caused in the area as the BTK serial killer. Let's go on with the next story killer case. Eileen Warners was known as America's first female serial killer. She did some terrible things in Florida during 1989 and 1990. She was the victim of child abuse when she was young. As an adult, she did small crimes and worked as a sex worker. While doing this job, she shot and killed six, maybe seven men. Usually, she left their bodies in the woods and took their things. Warner said she killed the men because they were violent to her. Police arrested her in 1991, and a year later, she was found guilty of the murders. She got six death sentences. Warner was given a lethal injection and executed on October 9, 2002. After spending 10 years in jail waiting to die, in the late 1980s on Florida's roads, Warners is thought to have killed as many as 7 men from 1989 to 1990. These men were all drivers who had to come for her. The first man she is believed to have killed was Richard Mallory. He was 51 years old and owned an electronics store. He was shot and killed on November 1989. His body was found two weeks later in a wooded area with many bullet wounds. Between June 1st and November 19th, 1990, they found the bodies of five men who were missing. All of them were connected to Warners. The police called Warners after they found a crashed car belonging to Sims. They found Warners' fingerprints inside the car. They arrested her at a biker bar called The Last Resort in Port Orange, Volusia County. They called Miss Moore in Pittston, Pennsylvania the next day. Then Warners admitted to Miss Moore during a recorded phone call as she committed the murders. During her trial, doctors said Warners might have a mental disorder called borderline personality disorder. But despite this, she was given the death penalty for the murder. British filmmaker Nick Broomfield talked to her while she was in prison, awaiting execution for his movie called Eileen Warners, The Selling of a Serial Killer in 1993. Another film, Monster, directed by Patty Jenkins and featuring Charlize Theron, also portrayed Warren's life, winning even an Oscar in 2003. What are your thoughts on these two cases? Comment it down below. In following court case, a retired police officer nicknamed the Golden State Killer got sentenced to life in prison. The ex-cop Joseph James D'Angelo 
who is now 74 years old, confessed to committing over a dozen murders during the 1970s and 80s. Investigators found him by using websites to track his DNA. In June, months after being in custody, D'Angelo said he did 13 murders and 13 rapes. He also said he did lots more, but it's too long to charge him for those. The court in Sacramento said he will be in prison forever with no chance to leave. Over four decades? That's a long time to wait for justice to be served. Finally, we have arrived at that day a victim said. The day when those who have waited so long will hear that Joseph D'Angelo will now serve the rest of his life behind bars is a happy one. In 2018, a series of old murder cases that hadn't been solved for a long time become big news. Police said they found out that D'Angelo was the suspect by using DNA from a simple genealogy website to solve the mystery. The investigators took DNA evidence found at a murder scene to figure out what the killer might be like. Then they put this information on a website. This website connected the killer's profile to someone related to D'Angelo, even though they were far apart in the family tree. To make sure, the police collected D'Angelo's DNA from his car door and a tissue he threw away. Finally, the victims and their families could find an end to the story and start to heal. The story went viral worldwide at the day of the sentencing. In the next case, a quite successful student ruined his life after horrific crimes that he did. Next case is about Zante Palmer. Palmer, 22 to that time, was known for being an excellent student and a talented football player. However, he has also been convicted of committing multiple murders and now serving a life sentence in prison. This sounds confusing, doesn't it? But when it was decided what punishment he shall receive for the death of three women and the injuring of two others, everyone involved, the families of the victims, the judge and attorneys were in agreement. Palmer got the biggest punishment the law could give. Judge Robert Rickney said Palmer would spend three lifetimes in prison for killing Nicole, Dee and Sarah. He also shot his girlfriend Angel who was expecting a baby. Thankfully both Angel and the baby lived through the attack. Deputy attorney Cynthia Collar described Palmer as a monster. He mentioned that because of the shooting on that day, Palmer's daughter will never meet her grandmother. Instead, she will only be able to see her father during visits to him in prison. Judge Rigney talked about the evidence in the case. He said it was really awful and sad, even the worst he has ever seen in his 37 years as a judge and a lawyer. He also talked about a video from a police officer who was one of the first to arrive. In the video, the officer was trying hard to help the victims and Rigney described it like a war zone. The jury found him guilty of 10 different crimes after the tragic shooting. The shooting took place in 2021 at the Young Terrace Apartments in Norfolk. Judge finally ended the court day with the words, you did this near homes with kids nearby. Showed no remorse, Rigney said, and sentenced Palmer to three consecutive life sentences for the three murder. In addition for the three murder, an additional life sentence for the aggravated malicious wounding of Giselle Dixon, 20 years for the wounding of his pregnant girlfriend Angel, plus 23 years for the gun charges. Do you agree with the charges in the case? Did he get what he deserved for his actions on this day? Comment it down below. When people love each other and have one of their first relationships in a young age, that should not be ending in a death. In the next case, a 19-year-old boy admitted he killed his teenage girlfriend. He came back to court to hear his punishment. There was a lot of confusion in the courtroom on the day his sentencing was announced when Frank DeLorean Jr. said he was guilty of killing Diamond Alvarez in January 2022. Some of Diamond's family members got very upset and had to be controlled by the court deputies. In 2022, the girl was walking her dog when Frank shot her many times. Investigators found out that Delian had sent her a message asking to meet her at a park. This helped them to focus on him because they were dating back then. Delian must serve half of the 45 year sentence before he's eligible for parole. She found out that he was cheating so he came somehow prepared. After the police thinks that the couple fought and argued, he shot her. She was gone for maybe about 20 minutes before the family at Diamond's house heard 22 gunshots. The dog Peanut came back covered in Diamond's blood, says prosecutor Steve Walsh. This defendant clearly had to reload. It's overkill and the sentence reflects the brutality of this young man's crime. As County District Attorney Kimmock, on this court day things look quite different. Alvarez's aunt was supposed to speak about how the crime affected her family during the sentencing. But only a few of the Delian family members showed up. After the punishment was given, Delian's mom spoke to the news. She said her son admitted to the crime because he was exhausted and wanted to protect this family. Delian was free on bond while waiting for his case to go through the courts. The trial was supposed to begin on a Monday, 
but he didn't come because his defense lawyer said he had an accident and needed hospital care. Since he didn't show up in court, they issued a warrant for his arrest, and later that day, De Leon was taken into custody. On Tuesday morning then, he appeared in court with his arm in a sling, all chained up. De Leon Jr. agreed to a plea deal, where he would get a 45-year sentence. The mother began walking towards De Leon when suddenly also another family member jumped at the teen in court. Then De Leon's mother also got involved. They fought for a few minutes until things calmed down and everyone left finally the courtroom with a talk about cheating had begun and ended in the death of a beautiful girl. Do you think he got what he deserved? Next, Keith Gibson, a serial killer, has been given seven life sentences in Delaware. He also faced charges in Philadelphia that haven't been resolved yet. Gibson is in trouble in Philadelphia for four murders in 2021, which includes the supposed killing of his mother. Also, Judge Ferris Wharton gave Keith Gibson, who is 41 years old, a punishment of nearly 300 years. This punishment is for crime like robbery, trying to kill someone, and more. Officials report that Gibson caused harm and violent outbursts just after getting out of prison in December 2020. He had been in jail in Delaware for around 13 years because of manslaughter and having a gun while committing a serious crime. A year before, he has been sent to jail. The jury found him guilty of murdering Leslie, age 28, and Ronald Wright, age 42, during a robbery. District attorney in Philadelphia approved the charges for Gibson with murder for killing his mother and a donut shop manager. Also, two men were found shot in the head at a store in Germantown and is being charged for that death too. Prosecutors used a lot of video recordings to show what happened during the robberies and shootings involving Leslie and Armand Story. The defense didn't bring any evidence or call any witnesses of their own. Instead, they focused on questioning the witness brought by the prosecution and highlighting that there wasn't any DNA or fingerprint proof connecting Gibson to the crimes. Once you committed the crimes, he drove away in the victim's SUV, which was later discovered close to Gibson's house. Early on the same day, he confronted Christine Lugo, age 40, as she was opening a Duncan shop in North Philadelphia. According to police, Gibson forced her inside, stole around $200 and fatally shot her in the head. This killing was also recorded in surveillance footage. In June 2021, when the police caught Gibson, he had on body armor and was holding special bullets that matched the ones found where two murders happened. They also found a gun close by that prosecutors think were used in the shootings. This case is one of the most horrific crimes in the intensity and how much crimes he did in just one day. The judge as well as the victim's family were shocked just hearing the details of his crimes. The statistics about young people hurting and committing horrific crimes is increasing. Two young people were given punishment for the brutal act of stabbing 17-year-old Harley Brown in Huddersfield. Brown was attacked with a knife and killed in a very cruel way. After he unexpectedly met two young people, he knew outside a store that's open all day and night. Two people whose names haven't been shared got life sentences in Leeds Crown Court. They admitted to murder. The older one, who's 17 now, has to spend at least 14 years and 6 months in prison. The younger one, who's 15 now, has to spend at least 10 years and 3 months in prison. In 2020, he left Deborah London and moved to Huddersfield for a safer life because his mom was worried he was getting mobbed by students. The court learned about this during the hearing. On the day of the attack, prosecutor Stephen Wood KC explained that Harley and a female friend that had planned to meet in the town center. They unexpectedly bumped into the two defendants outside a shop in Wakefield Road. Harley seemed scared when he spotted the pair as his friend later informed the police. On video, Harley was running away and the two people accused of the crime were following him. One of them, who was 17 years old, took out a big knife from his pants. The lawyer, who represents the government, said that the attack seems like it might be because of a fight between gangs, but the judge said there's no proof of that. In the courtroom, they said Holly was chased onto another street then by the two defendants. It looks like Holly falls to the ground after one of them, who's 15 years old, hits him. Then the 15-year-old can be seen using the big knife that's hurt Harley. The 15-year-old said he didn't have any personal problem with Harley. Instead, he chose to confront him because some other people thought Harley owed them money. In following shocking courtroom moment, court records reveal that a man who was filmed attacking a judge in Las Vegas is now being charged with attempted murder. Let's see how it all begun. The man from Las Vegas who broke the rules in court and attacked a female judge said he wanted to kill her. He blamed his behavior on having a bad day. He didn't want to go to court to deal with the new serious charges against him. Deborah Wren is a 30-year-old person who has been convicted of the crimes three times now. Judge Mary Kay 
was decide how to punish Ren for his numerous aggressive crimes. Ren's lawyer wanted the judge to let Ren go free on parole. However, the judge decided to send Ren to jail because he has a history of violence and has been arrested many times before. I think it's time that he got a taste of something else because I just can't with that history, she said. The 62-year-old judge couldn't finish announcing the prison sentence because Redden suddenly jumped over the stand, knocking Holtis off a seat. It took a lot of court and law enforcement people a few minutes to stop Ren before they could get him out of the courtroom. Redden said he got really angry and tried to hurt the judge because he was having a rough day. Later he said sorry to the officers for getting too upset. I'm sorry you guys had to see that, Redden said. While he was still in the courtroom, Redden supposedly spat at a correction officer to determine his mental state. But would you sentence him if you were the judge? Do you think the criminals in today's courtroom moments got what they deserved? If you know court cases that could be featured on the channel, please write it in the comment section. Take a second to write your thoughts down below. Please subscribe to our channel and check out one of these videos here. See you in our next video. Take care.